Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm really excited because we have a very, very, very special guest today on our show. It is Andy Way, and Andy is an amazing uh, person. He is a coach, a speaker, and an author, and he has an amazing story to tell, and he has some programs that he'd like to share and the steps in the program that he feels can change people's lives. Now, before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor. It is the Happy Wellness Expo. They're going to be in Livingston, New Jersey, and they are doing an expo with over 100 exhibitors. It's all on natural products. There'll be doctors, coaches there, and different technologies available to you. So check it out. We'll have the information in our description box. And if you want to actually participate, his number will be there also, and you can contact him directly. So Andy, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Well, Stacy, thank you for having me on. Happy to. Uh, you know, I'm a, a proud husband and father, and uh, you know, I'm a, an author, speaker, and a coach. I've turned my book into a program and, and lead these adventurement roundtables for small groups of men. So uh, that's been a lot of fun. And I do a podcast. <laughs> You know, you told me that you were really inspired. Your your true passion came from your story, your your life that you had experienced. That um, you had an incident with your your son. You went through this 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 whole thing, and it really put you on this track, on this road. And I'd like you to share with the audience a little about your story, if you don't mind, because I think they would really be touched by it and really see where all this true passion and love and the reason why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, great. Happy to. Um, you know, I, I was a single father for six years and uh, eventually did remarry. And we, my wife and I have been together for 13 years now. And, and Drew was about um, seven or eight when she and I started dating. Um, and I had always really done all I could to be the best father I could for Drew. Um, he is my only son. And um, you know, I just love the heck out of them, right? And so I wanted to be the best dad I could. So I immersed mm -hmm. myself into the conversation of fatherhood and uh, and relationships and, and also how that related to like raising boys in our culture today. And so modern right. culture came into that. And, um, but in sixth grade, things started to change. And uh, it, we found ourselves at the beginning of what became a six year long battle uh, to save his life. Uh, he was really struggling with you know, cutting and bulimia, which led to wow. you know, medications and then severe acute situational anxiety, depression, and then drug and alcohol abuse. And so this was uh, when you're in it and it's evolving, you don't really know what that next thing's going to be. Or, yeah. And you're just doing everything you can. Lord knows you don't want to see your uh, son struggle like that. And yeah, the real challenge was that I alone couldn't save him. And so uh, it really took its toll. You know, it's um, it's really hard when we go through life. We, you know, life has obstacles and we don't, you know, we don't sometimes really know, you know, what is going to happen now. Did you lose your son? Because I don't No, Thank, thank, <laughs> thank God. Right. I mean, he's he uh, he's an EMT today. Um, oh, so wonderful. He, he, we made it th through to the other side. And that uh, is wonderful. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it life has so many obstacles and, and, you know, there are times where people um, are able to help, you know, their child and, you know, and their, their, you know, their child is at the point where, you know, they want help also and they want change. And with the proper guidance and the proper help, they, you know, any it's possible for anyone to change in life. You know, you just have to be willing and you have to have someone there to help you and guide you and support you. And it's possible and for in any situation. And, you know, for you, um, this must have been a very traumatic event because especially when it's your child, you know, you watch your child suffering. You watch your child going through all this and you're basically the caretaker. So, mm -hmm. you know. So it's very hard because you don't have really control over the situation. You have some control, but not really. It's really in 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 your your son's hands, and it's really in God's hands, and it's really you know you really all you could do is be a support and a love and and be able to figure out a way that might help your child. Now that must have been very traumatic for you. How did you feel going through that? Uh, it was. 
Stacy, uh, it was a bit traumatic. I think I'm still healing, to be honest. Uh, he and I were uh, talking a little bit about it just last night and through some uh, some exchanges via text and a second phone call after he left home and uh, was just heading back. And so uh, it, it was. Um, I had closed my business to, to pour everything I had into him. And really, one of the things that helped me to heal, it was late one night. Uh, if you've been in that space before in your life, um, then you know how insular it can get. You can kind of feel mm -hmm. alone. You're not having uh, typical healthy interactions with the world around you, your friends and family. So, uh, but it was late one night and I discovered uh, on YouTube, this adventure motorcycle riding video. That, yeah. And I'm not a motorcycle guy. I'm from the Southeast coast. I'm a boater. Mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't really know where this came from, but when I saw it, there was this drone footage of these guys riding motorcycles in the back country of Colorado. And um, it just lit me up. You know, how badly did I want that sense of just camaraderie and connection and fun and uh, kind of that boyish sense of adventure. And yeah. so I really responded to that video and a month later bought my first motorcycle and taught myself how to ride. And, and it really instilled in me this capacity to start to heal and grow stronger for the road ahead for sure. I find it's like, it's amazing. Sometimes, you know, things are just put in front of us for a reason. And it's that intuition. It's that connecting with your inner self. And sometimes things just happen and you just know it's the right choice. Like, oh my God, you know, you just, you just feel there's, there's a connection there. You're not really sure exactly at the moment what the yeah. connection is, but you could feel that connection. And, and I always say like that intuition, just go with your intuition. Your intuition will never steer you wrong. You know, that's how I feel. And, 100%. you know, how did you feel when you got that motorcycle and you started to ride and you started to take those adventures that you were talking about? Yeah, it's been a, well, everything that I'm doing today is born out of that experience. Um, so the first time I started to ride, what was fun, my wife didn't like the fact that I rode a motorcycle. And yeah. that's kind of a common conversation, right? <laughs> Any guy who wants to ride a motorcycle, she's like, no. Um, but I'll tell you, she didn't like it, but I, I, she loved the way that I came home. Yeah. And I did too. You know, I got a chance to feed me. Right. Um, you know, and I got a chance to connect with that. Again, that kind of like boyish sense of adventure. I felt more alive and you know, there was something about it and I'd go off and I, it's not a Harley, these adventure motorcycles. These are, these are kind of big off-road dirt bikes that are street legal. Right. And, um, and so I was always out going and exploring backcountry roads and these gravel roads out and I'd go, you know, as far as kind of an hour and a half away and back in a single, in a single day. And, and I just, it, it instilled in me, yeah, this capacity to heal and grow stronger. And, uh, same at the same time, Drew was growing stronger and healing, and so, um, but and I started to unpack what that was and and why is it important. I feel like sometimes when you show yourself some self love, it makes you a better person all around. And when you're able to love yourself and you're able to grow stronger from that self love, you're able to help the people around you better. Because I feel like so many people go through the you know, especially parents, they feel guilty or shameful to to show themselves some self-love because they feel like they have to put everybody around them first. That's their job. But then if you don't take care of yourself and you don't give yourself self-love, right. how are you able to actually help the people around you and love the people around you when you can't even love yourself and care for yourself to get you to that point where you have enough of resilience to take care of the ones you love? It, it, absolutely right. I, I call it kind of capacity or margin. You know, we, we can't be, you know, have like in a car with the RPMs, that needle can't be just pegged where you just have no capacity for anything yeah. other than perfect day, uh, or you're just kind of wrecked. You know, somebody cuts you off and you just explode or, yeah. you know, you can't live like that. I mean, I think that our kids can feel our nerves like that. And oh, for sure. Isn't that kind of setting it up? Like we're putting a lot of weight on our, on the excuse of our children. Yeah. And they are the, <laughs> the causation of every experience we have. I think that we do need to uh, be kind to ourselves. And in this hypercritical world, um, you know, it's not cool to necessarily have OCD. People kind of brag about it, it seems. And it's like, well, that's a yeah. disorder. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, that's, we, we nothing good about it. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's not good, right? That stems from something that's not healthy. And yeah, and we and we do need to do the work to take really good care of ourselves so that we're not always kind of tank empty. Uh, it's okay to put some fuel in your tank when you're at three quarters of a tank as a right. as a human, right? So oh, for sure. Yeah. Hundred percent. Now you wrote a book and it was based on adventure and yeah. it was can you tell us a little about the book i know you have the book with you so i want you to show the, everybody the book and yeah, tell us a little about it and and what made you always adventure what yeah. made you want to write this because i know when i write books it's there's an inspiration behind it i just don't pick up a pen there's a reason for it what is your reason for writing that book i wanted to be able to better tell our story so that others could not have to go through some of the experiences that I had gone through. Right. Um, I only am careful only to tell my experience of what we went through. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't tell Drew's story or my wife's story. And the book is really set up where I tell a personal story from my life and I connect it to a lesson learned in these practices that really anybody can implement and take action on, you know, starting right where they are. Now, what are these practices? Because you, th this is your coping skills of how you got through all this, right? Definitely in part, for sure. I still practice these things today. <laughs> so, yes. So what, um, so what helped you? Yeah, so that they didn't they didn't come in order, right? There's these five practices. There's So that's the practice of allowing is number one. The practice of gratitude is number two. The practice of exploring the unknown or getting uncomfortable is three. Exploring the unknown is four and seeking excitement is number five. And they each have a specific primary outcome. Right. Now, can you tell us and like get a little bit, dive a little bit deeper into those, those practices? Because when people go through things in life, especially when they have people they love and they have their, you know, these people are going through really traumatic events in their lives and they're there to help them and they're, they're, they just, they, they're doing everything they can, but they don't see improvement and they don't see, you know, they, they just don't know what to do and they need, you know, some type of guidance and, you know, you, you're showing them self-love, you're showing them different ways of coping with problems and different ways of, you know, rising above the chaos, getting that courage and being able to move on with their lives. Like, you know, can you go into a little bit more depth of, uh, you know, if you had to tell people that are going through, you know, traumatic events or they have someone they love in their life and, you know, that, that, that person is on the wrong path and that person is going through things and you're sitting on the sideline and you only have so much so much power and so many things you can do, you know, what's your, your, um, your, your advice to these people? Like, how do you help someone when it is, is they're at a point where, you know, it's, it's so, they're so deep into the hole that, you know, you, you yeah. just don't know where to begin. It's like a highway and you just don't know which lane to turn. Sure. Well, I think that uh, several things pop up. Um, we have to be in action in order for life to, uh, kind of um, help us better understand which path to go down. Uh, so, you know, ducking our head in the sand doesn't work. And so, uh, and I know that before all of this, there's, um, particularly with our children, when we are our kind of late teen, early 20s children, they're kind of, you know, junior, senior high school, going to college, um, you know, or even it can start earlier, like it did for me. Yeah. Um, we have to, as parents, at some point, trust the seeds that we've been planting and we have to kind of let go of our need to control the outcome mm -hmm. until our children choose, right, yes. to take care of themselves and to, you know, some internal motivation. It doesn't matter how tight we squeeze until they begin to choose for themselves, right? And so letting go of our need to control the outcome is, is key. And we have to hand the reins over to them. Uh, and that was incredibly difficult for me to do. Uh, and and that's some, that's why I, how I learned the lesson. Right. <laughs> Right. And we had to get help. We had to let others really help us yeah. um, individually as a family, as a co-parenting family. Uh, we did a lot of work and we had it, it took a lot of effort to just kind of to trust and yeah. to allow people into uh, that conversation on such a you know, kind of a deep heartfelt level, right. kind of a tender space. Right. Yeah, for sure. 
I think one one big problem I see is I see a lot of people enable their children or enable the person right. they love. And it doesn't make the situation any better. It actually worsens the situation because they know that you're there. They know that if, if they, they keep behaving or keep doing these things, that there's no consequences and that, that you'll always be there, to, you know, no matter what. And, you know, did you go through that period? Because it seems like you went through that period and you really had to, you know, not enable and let go. Well, it, it was so, you know, I was in a co-parenting relationship and, um, in the, you know, in the other side of that coin, um, the, her love language was enablement, not saying no was the love language. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, so she, a powerful enabler, <laughs> never <laughs> said no. And, um, uh, and so parenting kind of against that was like parenting up a raging river. Um, mm -hmm. it was, it was very, very challenging to do. I definitely believe in some basic healthy structures, healthy boundaries, and, and some, you know, effective reasonable consequences right right uh, but that was an it, it was just like again parenting up a raging river so it was really hard to counteract that uh, right. when you're talking about consequences or uh, and right and wrong and, and things like that so definitely have experience with it <laughs> <laughs> what was the the first thing that you did that started you to actually see progress in the relationship between you and your son? Like what are some of the things that you started to do that really made an impact? Because if let's say if there were people here right now and these listeners are saying, okay, I'm in a similar situation. Like, what do I do? What do you tell those people? You know, I, again, I think that A, you have to, um, you have to trust that what you've done to date, you have to, those seeds are in there, right? So you can right. lose hope. I know that it gets, um, trust me, a six year long battle was no, was not inconsequential. I mean, we, our situation was so, so that, you know, I can relate is that it didn't matter who we were talking to and the, and their level of their experience and the amount of money we were spending and yeah. the, in the caliber of that care uh, and the specialization of that care uh, when you talk about a residential therapeutic boarding school, if you've ever had to make that decision, I know how incredibly difficult that is. Um, and we were a complex, a highly complex scenario in the world of highly complex scenarios. Right. Um, and so, you know, allowing, you know, trusting the, that the seeds are good, allowing people in um, and not, and following that model. If there is a place that you have chosen for support, you do have to trust it. Yeah. You do have to do what they say. Yeah. Um, that's why you're paying them. Um, right. And let it run its course. And you might have to do it twice. Yeah. <laughs> we certainly did. I mean, most of the other students at the residential therapeutic boarding school, it was typically a six month program. Right. And Drew was there for 14. And then he came home and then he ultimately went back again. Mm -hmm. All his entire high school was there. Right. You know, I mean, that's is atypical, but we believed in that and, and the heart they had for him. We believed in their ability. Yes. Right. So they had an earnest heart. They had, a, and we just had more work to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, and, and, and so we just had to continue to pour in, into him for sure. And I think yeah, people have to realize that everybody is different. So what one person, how one person reacts or how long it takes one person to get to point B is not necessarily going to be the same for the, another person. So one thing people have to remember is, is never compare your situation with somebody else's situation, because it doesn't even matter if you're in a very similar situation, you know, what one family does or how long it takes or the things, the methods they have to use might be beneficial for them, but it may not be beneficial for you and your family. And I think a lot of people in our society tend to compare and they tend to try to follow other people's paths. And it's good to get ideas from other people's paths, right. but it's not good to, to think in your head that everything should be done accordingly, exactly the way this other person did, and then expect the same results because everybody is different. Yeah, there's there's definitely a, a need. And it, I was kind of doing this all the time anyway. It's where like our, our family therapist was like, Andy, be kind to yourself. Because I was constantly kind of analyzing myself as, yeah. you know, as his father, you know, right. Like, what, what could I have done better? Or where, what did I do wrong? Yeah. Right. I mean, oh, no, yeah. I, 
I was constantly in that conversation for myself. And the other side of that coin is true too, that it, it is important for some honest self inventory, right? Yeah. Like, you know, if you ever want to see, I heard this recently and it's absolutely the truth. If you ever want to see what somebody's committed to look at the outcomes in their life. Yeah. And so, you know, think about your priorities and the decisions you make and, um, and, and, and how we're modeling as parents. Right. Um, and then let your child be themselves. I mean, if Drew dyed his hair purple or pink, it didn't mean that that was the sum total of his identity and who he was as a person. Exactly. He's just trying some stuff on in the world. It's exactly. not that serious. Yes. No, it's just not th that serious. We got to let them grow up. Exactly. Make some mistakes, fail forward. I mean, it, it's not, yes, our children are a reflection of us as parents, but not, not, not entirely either. They yes. are their own identity. Oh, they for sure. They're their own identity. You know, I, I always say this, I said it on many shows, you know, we had a doctor come on and he, he was talking about how when the egg rolls down the fallopian tube, you've already, that, that egg has already, um, had developed 240 characteristics of their personality already. So when you think of that, you know, it, they aren't, they are who they are. They may have some similar traits as us. They may learn from our environment, but they are their own individual person. And you do have to let them grow and you do have to let them be their own person because when you don't, that's when you see the unhappiness when they grow up right. and they didn't right. get to be who they wanted to be because they were stopped or they were told they couldn't, you know, that, that sticks with a person as a child and through their grown up years. And I think right. like another good point you mentioned is that you kind of beat yourself up and we we do that all i think a lot of parents do that we oh i could have did this better i could have did that better i shouldn't have done this maybe i could have done this you know what did i do wrong you know right. we have to realize as parents that we all make mistakes we do the best we can you know with the tools we have yeah. and you know and we you know you can't change the past. And I always say the past is the past. You can't change the past, but we can focus on the present and take the things we learn from the past and apply it to today's life in the now and make yeah. better choices and make a better person in the future. But I think I, the biggest thing I see so many people and we've all done it, including myself, is we beat ourselves up sometimes for things that have happened. And that's one of the, I think the worst things we could do to ourselves emotionally. And yeah. I think it affects us even physically. What do you think? Oh, for sure. I think that, you know, in a world where, look, the work that I do with my clients, we start with clarity, right? So if we don't have any clarity, then every single person, company, you know, anybody who wants our time, talent, and treasure, right, and attention, mm -hmm. then we just give it away. Right. Right. No wonder we have such a, a, a an overwhelming amount of anxiety and overwhelm in our country. In yeah. our country. It's an emotional health battle because everybody's so attached to their phone. Right. You know, that that anybody who wants your time, talent, and treasure, your energy, you just give it to them. Yeah. It's almost like carte blanche. Oh, you need me? Oh, because you right, that you're gonna wrestle with anxiety and overwhelm when you're living like that with yes. clarity, right? Once you slow down to Speed up, mm -hmm. right? take the time to get clear about what you want, where you want to go, what you want to accomplish as a mom, as a dad. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, professionally for yourself, uh, in relationship with yourself, your partner, your family and friends, your, ch your children. Yeah. Get that clarity. And then what's that look like? Right. And then how do we do that? And then you align your actions in, in support of that clarity and now you know what to say yes to, and you know what to say no to. And yeah. if it's in alignment with what you want your life to look like, then great, say yes. If it's not, stop giving all everything away. Yeah, exactly. Right? And you'll experience far more calm and capacity and peace and ease and joy um, if you have if you slow down long enough to just get some clarity and learn how to say no. <laughs> yes. And I think that's a that's a big problem with people is they don't have, know how to say no. And I think it really it really hurts them a lot, you know, in the long run. I think that's great advice. Now, besides clarity, what are some other things that you suggest to your your clients that work really well to help them in situations similar to yours? Sure. So you know, in the book, I set up really in kind of two parts. Um, 
you know, in the work, I, you know, I dive deeper into this process um, with an assessment and we go, the, go through some actionable concepts, but the two parts, one and two, so we'll focus there. I've learned this last, the practice of allowing, the outcome for the practice of allowing is change. It's the yes. catalyst for all change. Mm -hmm. I, I have some friends and one in particular comes to mind, brilliant, brilliant guy, Um but I had already gone through what he was going through. Yeah. And he would ask some questions and we would meet for lunch and so forth. But there was nothing I could say. Like he couldn't hear anything. Right. I've been in a high level coaching programs with brilliant, accomplished, smart people. Yeah. But they couldn't hear. Yeah. You know, and they, and they couldn't, they, they had all these limiting beliefs and they would not allow themselves to believe in a different possibility. Yeah. Right. And so it's kind of, will you allow yourself to give yourself some grace? Will you allow yourself to get complete with that old story, that anchor that you're dragging around through life? That's yeah. just not true. Will you allow yourself to do the work to get complete so that you can move forward? Right. right? Will you allow yourself to trust in the guidance that you're seeking um, yeah. or even to, to begin to seek guidance from right. another source? Right. And to yeah. trust them. So the practice of allowing is huge and, and nothing really happens at all until we understand that and yeah. start to take steps forward to, you know, really practice allowing and, and make a, make a shift in our lives. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. You know, we have to allow and, and, and let change enter our lives. And what do you say to the people who are fearful of change? Those people who are afraid of change they're afraid to face it. They're afraid of failure. They're afraid of what if, you know, who will I become? What's going to happen if I allow this change into my life? You know, what do you tell those people? Well, we, we actually touch heavily on that in practice number three. Um, but <laughs> so happy to get there and dress that head on. I love it. Uh, what if, right? Um, but I would also say that you know, look, time is not stopping. Mm -hmm. uh, we live in a, in an, ever-changing rapidly evolving world yeah you know if we're not cognizant of that and, and intentionally aware about kind of what's happening around us and how yeah we're setting ourselves up to suffer the pain of regret later yes so while those things may be uncomfortable we're going to have an experience of life either way yes <laughs> and so you know if you practice allowing um and we step into practice the next practice is the practice of gratitude yeah Right. And and that the outcome for the practice of gratitude is positivity. Mm -hmm. And those two really prepare us for the road ahead. Oh, you know, it's, sure. it's important to infuse some positivity into our lives. Yeah. You know, I, I believe positivity is key. You know, that's what got me through my life is, is taking everything that happened in my life and looking at the positive, you know, even negative things that occurred in my life. I always pulled out something positive because I felt like when I did that, it made me stronger. I, how did this make me a better person? Did it give me experience? How can I use it to help myself, you know? And I, I would look at the positive. And when I stopped looking at the negative and I always looked at the positive, it made me feel better as a person. And then I feel like when you have gratitude, I think one thing we lack in our society, a lot of people, is we have we have a lack of gratitude. And people don't realize, you know, what they have until they lose it. And the littlest things in life, the simplest little things in life, once you lose that, you can it, you it, it can you don't you don't realize how important it was in your life until it's taken away from you. <laughs> A hundred percent. And it can be so simple too. I mean, the gratitude, uh, it, it's absolutely, it's incredibly powerful, right? Yeah. In this world of comparison, um, you know, it's, it's baffling, you know, what cars cost today or even a, a decent, you know, a, a nice meal out. Yeah. Um, it's expensive. It is. And, you know, when, when we, if we live in this world of just kind of hyper comparison and this idea of, I want, yeah. You know, that thing or this idea, and I don't have it, this idea of lack. Yeah. Right. Then, you know, the practice of gratitude, the way I started to do it when I first started and still today is I would have some practice. I practice gratitude a little bit in the morning. I called yeah. it bookending my days. Right. I do a little bit in the morning, a little bit at night. Mm -hmm. You know, just grateful for my rest, grateful for the day ahead 
grateful that I can walk and my heart beats and I can see and hear and smell and taste, right? Exactly. So I was just grateful. I have a family and friends who love me. The simplest things simplest I was just grateful things. for. Um, yeah. And that just really infuses you. I look, I kind of relate to it like some armor for yeah. the road ahead before the day starts. To, you know, I can really immerse myself in just some positive goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that really helps. Now, how do you incorporate positivity into your life, you personally? The practice of gratitude. That's the outcome. Okay. So you, yeah. use, okay, I see. Yeah. So that's the primary outcome for the practice of gratitude is positivity. And it just gotcha. really, right. You're grateful. I do these walking meditations out in this park near our house and you just feel so positive after you've been out there in nature yeah. and you're kind of just spending some time with God or the you know, higher power and, um, and just stepping away for a minute to go do that and take care of me um, yeah. is really uh, it just makes everything better. <laughs> no, Even really though does. I might still have a hard day ahead, I'm starting in a stronger position than just getting up and rushing out. Right. I I love the idea of like maybe just taking a walk, looking at nature, breathing in the air, looking at the trees or the flowers, you know, so things like little things like that. And sometimes even paying attention to the sounds around you, maybe yeah. the birds or, you know, a little chirp in here and, and just looking at things or, you know, spotting a butterfly on a, on a flower, you know, these things kind of, they kind of change your momentum. They change your energy. They change the way you feel. And it actually could be really positive. Now, have you ever, you know, what's your thoughts about like journaling? Do you like the, the, the concept of it? Do you practice it? I would say that I practice it. Uh, irregularly you know mm -hmm. I think there are times where I feel like oh I, I have some stuff I want to kind of like give birth to or get out of me or capture or right sometimes it's just a an opportunity to move through yeah uh, some thoughts emotions or feelings I might be having yeah um you know where I'm just gonna get this stuff out of me and uh, next thing you know I start I kind of connect with something more meaningful it turns yeah. out uh, it can be as simple as a free writing exercise and right. next thing you know uh, some of those free writing exercises that I went through when I was preparing for the book uh, were incredibly powerful kind of messages um, uh, about, you know, my son and my, you know, how I felt about him and right. um, just how much I loved him, you know. And so there were some powerful, I get, I used to get significant stage fright mm -hmm. and I would go to open mic nights in other areas of town and read my free rights just to get used to being up on stage and practice getting uncomfortable. It really helped, but yeah. Did you get to any point where you felt maybe angry, angry at why all this was happening? Did you have to learn how to let go of that anger? Because a lot of times we go through life, it's like, you know, so many people will say, why me? Why is this happening? You know, you know, what did I do that I deserve something like this to happen to me? You know, and then not knowing the future and not knowing what's ahead and the frustration and, and just feeling lost you know, were these emotions that you went through? And if they were, how did you overcome it? Um, absolutely. I had those, emo <laughs> those emotions. Um, uh, sometimes to the point where it scared me. I mean, even in the middle of the night and uh, I just hugged my wife because it, it startled me. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of anger. I felt like mm -hmm. I had, you know, I'm from the Southeast coast and I live in the Midwest and I felt like I'd kind of surrendered a dream of being on the water and i you know i'd gr grown up like huck finn with a motor on the intercoastal waterway and lived on a sailboat and was out yeah. to see in the navy before living here i am my whole life was the ocean right and um and so i had some animosity that i mm -hmm. you know i felt like i'd given up my family and um you know my passion to pour into my son and i was giving him everything i had yeah and i felt like kind of some of those his mother's behaviors were causing all of these things. And, right. and so I had a lot of anger that I, I poured out so much. Um, and it was, it was constant. It was just a constant thing. Uh, yeah. So I had a lot of anger and, um, I had to really release that, right. The practice yeah. of allowing some grace, yeah. uh, slow down to kind of give some perspective to where she's coming from. And, uh, that took a lot of work, some, a lot of help. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I that took a lot of patience, mm -hmm. grace, um, 
Yeah. And, and just kind of releasing that anger too. There was just a lot of work I had to do to release it because it, it's not going to help. Right. It's not going to help Drew. Right. It's not going to help me. Right. Uh, it doesn't you know, just to be angry. Yeah. Um, at some point it's like, you, you just, is that what you want to do? Be how does that, Is that how you want to feel all the time? Just angry? Yeah, exactly. I can't control her. <laughs> you, know, like, yeah. you can only control what you can control and everything else. You really need to question how you relate to it. Because if you're walking around just buried in anger, uh, like I was uh, for a while, I was very angry. I was very sad yeah. as well. But um, yeah, that's certainly an unhealthy thing to be walking around. And it's a it's something I would encourage people to try to get rid, get rid of as fast as possible. Right. Do you feel like maybe verbalizing it to other human beings and to be able to get support and maybe to get an unbiased opinion or direction is, is really helpful? Yeah. You know what? I, you know, it's, uh, we had a lady, uh, Gail English is our, is our therapist and um, she was working with Drew and then uh, with me and then with my wife and I, and sometimes we have an appointment with, it's been years now. Yeah. And sometimes we have a meeting with Gail on a Saturday morning and there's nothing wrong. My wife and I are perfectly happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we have a great relationship with Drew. I mean, yeah. for the most part, right? Like everything's, but we just get to kind of check our blind spots. Right. And so I think it's a, it's really important not to, to be aware of when we are um, not in maintenance, right? Or right. we don't need to set ourselves up to be in a position where we react to life as it happens to us yeah. versus generating our life uh, in alignment with our heart and vision and what we truly care about and, and, and set ourselves up, you know, like a, a, really to have a full tank of gas, right? Yeah. Are we taking care of ourselves in every way that we can? Um, yeah. Incredibly, critically important. Well, I think we have to realize when it comes to, to life, we don't have control and I think that's when we have to really, you know, learn to let go because, you know, if you keep trying to think that you have control and you keep trying to control a situation, the situation is not going to get better and neither are you, I feel like. I mean, it's a bit cliche, right? We can control how we react to things. We can't yes. control our emotional, right? Our thoughts. Yes, 100%. Our, you know, the meanings, we can control the meanings we give things, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we can control our beliefs. Right. Um, and so that we can and everything else. And they also, it's just not that serious. Some things you just kind of have to yeah, you play a little bit. Exactly. So, you know, that, that's the fifth practice and it's twofold. And so, you know, we have talked about allowing and gratitude. Um, there's, and, and then the next, right, is when we really get into work, the practice of getting uncomfortable, exploring the unknown and seeking excitement. Yeah. And that fifth one is, is about play. Right. It's about relaxing a little bit intentionally and giving yeah. yourself some space to be happy, be right. kind of childlike and playful. Um, Lord knows, uh, Gail had really encouraged me to, you know, I can feel all the feels and that and be with that. Yeah. Um, and that's OK. Um, but it's also important to yeah go play a little bit and allow myself to do that, too. Right. And that's really good advice. You know, that's definitely good advice. Now. If if we could take everything that we we've gone over today, what are some of the things you'd like to emphasize? Some takeaways that you really want the listeners to really learn from everything that you've you know talked about in this session. Um, real quick, it would be that you got to let go of your need to control the outcome in your children, right? Right, uh, and let them show up. Number two is allowing. If you can't receive, because you are just. Um, too tender or too, you, you got too much armor on and, and you know everything uh, and you have no blind spots and you have it all figured out. That's a dangerous thing. I would seriously consider you thinking about, you know, a, allowing and giving consideration, allowing people to pour into you and trust yeah. that, some, that they love you. Right. And trust that that process is, will work and, and trust yourself. Right. Yeah. So, so that's a big one. Um, and then start getting uncomfortable. You got to get clarity, right? <laughs> so I can't say just one, I guess, right? Clarity, yeah. you got to start to get uncomfortable and uh, and you don't have to have it all figured out. Right. You know, I, I, I allow things to unfold. Yeah, 100%.
I think, you know, people want, you know, and people in our society, especially want one, two, three answers. And it doesn't work like that. It, you know, everything takes time and change takes time. And, you know, you have to just, like you said, let everything unfold and it takes time to unfold and just be patient. Like you mentioned, you talked about patience also. For sure. Very true. Now, can you show everybody your book again? So they know. Yeah. Yeah, happy to. Yeah, it, it's on Amazon. Um, I'd love for you to to check it out. Um, yeah, I, I was kind of shy about this book for a long time, but um, I definitely poured my heart into it. The reviews have been great, and uh, so I, I'd love for you to to check it out and um, pull some nuggets out of there. <laughs> and what services do you have on your website? Because I know you have the program, you have a whole bunch of stuff. Can you tell everybody what you offer? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the primary thing that I'm most excited about, I turned that book into a program. I have a partnership with the Institute for Experiential Learning and, and go, go through this whole process. Um, now what I'm most excited about are these Adventureman Roundtables. They are kind of dedicated to dads and generally just men uh, yeah. that are kind of 35 to 55 years old. And, um, you know, they're smart, they're accomplished, uh, but they want to connect deeper and and then and, and push further and grow. And so these Adventureman Roundtables, it's on the site. I also do coaching, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, and I, I speak as well. So, Oh, that's awesome. Now, what is your domain name where people can find you? Alwaysadventurelife.com. I love it. Okay. And it, uh, you are on social media also? I am. You can certainly connect with me on LinkedIn and and anywhere there's an Andy way or an always adventure, that's me. And so typically LinkedIn or, or Facebook and, and happy to connect. You can shoot me a message or, or shoot me an email at Andy at always .com. Happy to support you and, and uh, get to know you. I love it. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming today and talking to us. We'd love to have you back. This has been really special because I think, you know, everyone goes through really traumatic events in our lives at one point or another, several times, some for us, and learning different ways of coping with different situations. We could actually apply to more than just that type of situation. We could apply it to various things in our lives. You know, it's, it's their coping skills. And if you learn coping skills, you can virtually apply it almost to everything, just alter and tweak a little bit. And it could help you through your entire life. So I, I think what you're doing is great. I think what you're doing can help many, many, you know, thousands of people out there because we all go through things in life. But the thing is, people don't know where to begin. Where do I start? And your book tells it all. Your website has everything. Your program has everything you need. So everybody take it, take a look at Andy's website and look at his program and especially his book on Amazon, because, you know, when it comes to life, we all go through things in life. You know, I've gone through things. I know everybody has gone through things, but finding the answers and finding productive ways and like some guidance can, can make a huge difference in people's lives. So check out Andy's work, check out his, his website. And once again, kudos to everything you're doing. You took a, a very, you know, traumatic event in your life and you used it as a learning experience. And then now you're using it to help others. So I give you kudos for that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Stacey. It's been an honor being on the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. You too. Thanks a lot.